This is not necessarily how we want to begin our day, but it does serve as an example of one way to park your bike without any chance of it tipping over during the night. And so now the dilemma is how to get it out of the sand. Let's see if I can sort of fill this hole in with dirt a little bit here. There's nothing in that pannier, it's empty. And so really I've kind of minimized the weight of the motorcycle as much as I can and now I just need to pick it up. And if I can't do that, then it's time to use my Garmin inReach and hit the SOS button. Just kidding, I'm sure we'll be able to figure this out. There we go. Whoa, almost went back the other way. You can see how quickly it wants to dig itself back into the sand. Uh, there we go. That's a little easier. There we go. Now, pick it up one more time. Ah, there we go. I should be able to ride out now that I'm upright and pointed in the right direction. So now I'm gonna walk down the beach and set up my Fuji mirrorless camera on the tripod with the, the 90 millimeter lens, my secret sauce for excellent cinematography. And I'll have my drone in the air. And I'll have both of the GoPros rolling, so this is going to be all guns ablaze. So I've got this camera in position, I've got my shot set up, and it's a really long ways back to my little campsite, so I'm going to have to hit the record button and walk all the way back there, get on the bike, get the GoPros mounted and rolling, and get the drone rolling, and then ride past this camera and continue around the corner over here. Okay, camera is rolling, battery is burning. I'm gonna walk back here and get this job done. And for this shot, I'm not even gonna buckle my helmet. It just saves time. I'm just going down the beach, so let's Attach this GoPro now to my helmet. These little GoPros are really kind of temperamental because it locks up and it just doesn't have any functionality. And as you can see, I cracked the lens. So if you notice any weird lens flares, that's why. And then my iPhone here was also running out of power, but I'm able to hook it up to the battery in my motorcycle to give it a little boost so that I can use it in my drone controller. I'll have the drone flying behind me, so I'll get that perspective. I feel like for the first time on this trip, I really found what I was looking for way out here on the far western reaches of Vancouver Island, a really remote and beautiful and wild place. And I was able to find the kind of campsite that I was looking for that was scenic and beautiful. I got there with plenty of time to film things and all of it, the cinematic glory that I wanted. I found some relatively decent food to, to prepare a, a beautiful dinner, and I drank an entire bottle of wine. It just was going down really well. And then I got up this morning and I was able to share with you some more of the reality of filmmaking on a trip like this. And I'm really looking forward to being able to head back today and get back into civilization. I might even, well, I don't know if I'll get a hotel or not tonight, but I have to catch a ferry tomorrow morning at like six in the morning. So I need to position myself near the ferry dock somewhere, find a place where I can either stay in a motel or camp and then get up really early. I can't miss this ferry. I missed it last week already. The drone has become a very powerful weapon in my cinematic arsenal. And I charge batteries as I go. I always try to start with a fresh battery because the last thing you want to deal with, you know, the drone running out of battery. This is the most important bag of all because that's a hard drive that contains all of the footage from this project. Got the drone controller right here. Zip our camera bag back up, strap on and unstrap as easy as I can make it, but also it's still kind of cumbersome. And then I have to take the sticks out, the joysticks, and mount them in, but at least they pack up pretty small. Turn on the remote controller, turn on the drone, and we'll position this ram mount, the remote control, right here. 
Everything is in position. I'm going to launch the drone. There it goes. And we're just going to record some scenes of me riding down this hill on Vancouver Island. So we'll kind of set up our shot here. I will enter into the frame and I will move the drone with the remote controller. So this is me carefully flying the drone. This is a good shot because I can really clearly see myself on this road. I'm a, a black silhouette against uh, the white background of the road itself. And I feel like this is a shot that can be repeated over and over and over again because it has an inherent story in it. You have the story of a landscape with a road, which implies a journey, and then a lone figure, a motorcyclist on that road going somewhere. And all that really changes is the landscape. gas station here in Port Alice and from here I've got to go about 60 kilometers 40 miles to get up to Port Hardy that's where my ferry goes to Bella Coola but as it turns out um, I'm still on the waiting list I'm gonna go up there I'm gonna hopefully get a hotel spend the day up there and relax and see if I can get on this boat tomorrow going out on a boat oh just filling up you know yesterday so. oh fishing yeah. Yeah. Too hot, though. Too hot. Yeah, it is. It's hot up here, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty warm. Yeah, the last couple of days. Yeah. I'm from Arizona, and it was hotter up here than it than it is where I live back home. Is that right? Eh? Yeah. Yeah, we don't get a lot of this hot weather. Do you like it? No. I hate hot weather. Yeah. I'm used to the cooler weather. Eh? Yeah. Everybody's complaining about the heat up here. They say that it's hot. It's too hot. They don't like it. They're not used to this kind of heat and they can't wait for things to cool off again. It's a big holiday weekend up here in BC and everybody says they're going to the lake. I keep hearing this talk about the lake and I asked, which lake is that? Well, it turns out there's tons of lakes around here. So there is no one lake in particular that they're referring to. Anyways, it's hot. I'm riding on a beautiful paved road. I'm gonna go up to Port Hardy, that's where the ferry to Bella Coola goes. Again, it's really busy. It's a holiday weekend. On Monday, it's BC Day, British Columbia Day. So everybody's traveling and moving and ferries are full. Being on a motorcycle should help out. It's a little easier to get on and off the ferries. But today is just gonna be a beautiful day of a quick ride on these beautiful paved roads through the woods up to Port Hardy. Now here's something, I'm not quite sure what it is. It looks like a blade from a giant wind turbine. And over here, some typical tourist signs welcoming us to Port Hardy, where the highway ends, adventure begins. Well, we kind of agree with that. And this is kind of the furthest north big town on Vancouver Island. So we've covered a good bit of the northern part of Vancouver Island. Pretty proud of that. Okay, we're coming into Port Hardy now. As you can see, it's located on the water here. And if I'm not mistaken, our ferry terminal is directly across the way. Okay, it appears like there is a little downtown area here. It's a visitor center and a chamber of commerce. There's a hostel over there. Ooh, a sushi restaurant, cafe. Well, I'm definitely back in civilization. I'm not used to traffic, apparently. I've been out in the wilderness for too long. So I was looking at the hotels available in town and it seems like I could get a room for about $150 US. But then I noticed on hip camp that there was an RV park down here and it's only $30 a night. I thought I would come down here and check it out. Hi. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Do we have any more campsites today? So our attending area is open concept oh. and it's just straight ahead. Just straight ahead. Yeah. Drive in, take so a look. You can be in the forest or you can be on the estuary. Cool. Where did you just arrive from? Arizona. Wow. Yeah. That's quite the journey. Yeah. Cool. And you're solo? I'm solo. I've been on the road for, oh, a month. 
40 days, I think. This is uh, quite, yeah. quite the unit you have I, here. All right, straight ahead. Once again, super friendly people. Everybody up here in Canada is just so friendly. It's really made uh, my trip delightful. She said I could have forest camping or estuary camping. So I could probably camp right here if I wanted on the estuary and in the sunshine. Nice, I love how you can just drive right up here. Or I could be over here kind of tucked in in the shade. Choices. So this is campsite option number one. It's got a picnic table here and a little fire ring in the sun and it's pretty warm and bright right now. But I'm thinking to go for this option. Maybe I'll pitch my tent somewhere over here right by the picnic table and I can bring my bike right down in here and create a nice little campsite. I probably could have found a hotel room in Port Hardy. It looked like there were some available and you know to be honest I was kind of looking forward to that. Um, but then, you know, I found a, a really beautiful, pleasant campsite here, and I absolutely don't mind camping and sleeping in my tent. It's really comfortable. I really enjoy it. It's just kind of all the other stuff that goes along with it that can be hard sometimes, you know, finding the right food and building a fire and cooking dinner. And, you know, sometimes that's really enjoyable and relaxing and peaceful, and I enjoy it. And other times it just feels like a chore and a little bit more work than I want to do. So I'm thinking for the for the price, this is only $30 a night compared to $150, that I'll just pitch a tent here and I'll go back into town and maybe get some sushi or something at one of those restaurants and then come back here and take a hot shower here and sleep really comfortably on my tent in the forest here. All right, I've got some laundry detergent and I've got a bunch of loonies and it's time to go do some laundry. As many of you know, Eva and I, my girlfriend, we have a small vintage motel back in Arizona where I live. And we live on site at the motel. We have seven rooms and we actually have a little campground of our own in the backyard. And so for me, it's just really interesting to check out these different lodging opportunities along the way and see how other people do the same thing. You know, what do they have available for their guests? How do their operations run? and you know get inspiration and get ideas that i can bring back home to arizona that we can institute in our motel in our campground for folks like you when you're traveling through and so you know when i look at a place like this and look at the campground it's always sort of with an eye as as a a business owner an innkeeper a campground manager myself and you know this is a pretty nice place i really like that they have the the campground set up you know where it's located in a beautiful location with a view of the estuary so right now i'm going to go do the laundry and you know i can see that they have these cool little cabins over here there's a playground for children there's an outdoor barbecue pit that's covered from the sun and the rain already it's just like you know a, a, a cool vision of what i want to do with our place in arizona and it's just really fun to check these kinds of places out along the way on a trip like this over here, we've got a laundry room and a shower. Oh, so I'm wearing the only piece of clothing that I own besides every other piece of clothing that I own, which is going to get washed. And it's only $2, two loonies. I'm using my phone as a mirror because they don't have a mirror in here. <laughs> 